In this video, I'll take a look at the Heathkit HD1416 code oscillator. Until the early 1990s, knowledge of sending and receiving Morse code was a requirement for amateur or ham radio licenses around the world. Students typically practice sending the code using a key connected to a buzzer or more often some kind of code practice oscillator which produced a tone in a speaker or headphones. Many hams built their own, but they were also commercially offered by a number of manufacturers. Heathkit was no exception, and they offered code practice oscillators in kit form from the late 1950s until the time they exited the kit business in the early 1990s. The HD1416 is a code practice oscillator offered by the Heathkit company as a kit from 1976 to 1986. The price varied over the years from US $995 to $2495. It came as a kit of all parts, including a Morse code key and a detailed manual of assembly instructions that also included tips on learning the code. The color and styling matched most Heathkit equipment of the time. Previous models of Heathkit practice oscillators were the CL1, offered from 1959 to 1967, and the HD16 from 1967 to 1974. In 1987, the HD1416 was restyled in a brown color, which Heathkit had started to adopt at that time for their ham radio products, and sold as the HD1416A. In 1988, it was changed to a black color and sold as the HD1416H, which was offered until 1991. All three HD1416 models were identical other than color. The HD1416 connects to a Morse code key by a set of terminals. When the key is closed, it produces a tone through a small speaker. Headphones can also be plugged into a quarter inch jack, in which case the speaker is silenced. The front panel has a volume control, which works for both speaker and headphone operation. The frequency or pitch can be adjusted by using a trim pot inside the unit. The range is roughly 200 to 850 hertz. It's powered by a standard 9 volt battery. Normally it would be used standalone with a code key for practice, but it could also be connected across the key terminals of a ham radio transmitter to produce a side tone during transmitting if the transmitter was one that didn't provide this feature itself. It's compatible with transmitters that use negative grid block keying up to 400 volts DC, which included a number of Heathkit transmitters and transceivers of the time. The front panel has terminals for the key that accept wires or banana jacks. As mentioned, you could also connect a suitable transmitter here, in which case polarity would be important. Headphones can be connected to the quarter inch mono jack. It was designed for headphones of 600 ohms or greater impedance. With no headphone plugged in, sound would come from the small internal speaker. The volume control adjusts sound level. There's no power switch as the unit doesn't draw any power unless the key is down. The rear panel has a grill to allow sound to come out. You need to remove two screws from the front panel to pull the chassis out to change the tone frequency or replace the battery. Inside, most circuitry is on a single-sided printed circuit board except for the front panel jacks and control. A 45 ohm speaker is mounted at an angle facing the rear grill. The 9 volt battery connects to a clip and is inserted into the bracket holding the speaker. The unit would have originally had some foam to hold the battery in place more tightly. The trimmer pot at the back adjusts the frequency. Typically this is set once to the user's preference so it doesn't need to be a front panel control. The circuit's quite simple and uses three transistors, two MPSA20 and one 2N5294A. When the key is closed, power from the battery is applied to the circuit. The transistors and diode are actually marked with Heathkit part numbers, indicating the buying power that Heathkit had at the time to have parts customized for them. Two transistors are used in an A-stable multivibrator circuit to produce a series of pulses at an audio frequency. This produces an approximate square wave. It's filtered slightly and passes to a volume control. This signal is sent to the headphones when connected. 
A third transistor amplifies the signal further to drive the speaker. A diode allows the unit to be connected across the transmitter by blocking any negative voltage from the transmitter keying circuit. We can see the output waveform on this oscilloscope. It's almost a square wave into an open circuit, but changes when a load such as the speaker or headphones is connected. For this application, there's no need for the output to be a pure sine wave. It just needs to be a tone that's reasonable pleasing to the ear. I bought this unit from a local seller on eBay in January of 2021. The price was attractive as there was no shipping cost. It was in good shape, complete, less the key and manual, and appears to be all original parts. I was able to find multiple copies of the complete manual on the internet. After some visual inspection, I connected a battery and it worked. The volume control was noisy, but applying some contact cleaner corrected this problem. The foam that would have originally been around the battery to hold it in place was missing. This was for the best, as it often breaks down and makes a gooey mess after several decades. I could replace it with some modern foam. The feet appear to be original, but there should have been four. I suspect the original builder intentionally left the back two off in order to angle the unit up a little bit more. Adjusting the frequency trimmer, I got a range of frequencies from 266 hertz to 971 hertz. I adjusted it for a side tone of about 700 hertz, which I typically use on my other equipment. I've also made a YouTube video on the Heathkit CO1 practice oscillator mentioned earlier. When I first learned Morse code, I made a code practice oscillator out of some junk box parts and case. It worked fine, but it didn't look as attractive as this Heathkit unit. This would have made a good first kit for someone getting into ham radio, as well as helping to learn Morse code sending. It would help them improve their soldering skills and learn to identify electronic components so they could gain the confidence to later tackle a larger kit. It's fun and nostalgic to use a vintage code oscillator like this one. Many hams still learn and use Morse code, or CW, today and require a code practice oscillator when learning, so the unit can still serve a useful purpose.